Welcome back. The physicist Professor Stephen Hawking says that modern science has established there was no need for God in the creation of the universe. In a new book, Hawking suggests that a theoretical framework known as M-theory can explain how the Big Bang was an inevitable consequence of the laws of physics. Our science correspondent Tom Clark has been grappling with his thinking. He's been fated by world leaders. He shed new light on black holes. As a popularizer of science, he took the mind-bending field of cosmology to the masses. He's even experienced weightlessness. Now Stephen Hawking has taken on God. Until now, there's been plenty of room for the hand of God. Even though Darwin has explained how life evolved, physicists are yet to unravel the rules of the universe and how it came to be. Einstein's theory of relativity is very good at explaining the big stuff, what forces govern the planets, the stars and the galaxies that fill our universe. People like Erwin Schrödinger and his famous cat help to refine quantum theory. It explains the weirdness of very small things, subatomic particles like electrons and quarks and the forces that move them around. But the major headache for physics is that quantum theory and relativism don't add up. They can't tell us what came before the Big Bang or why it happened, leaving lots of room for God. But could string theory be about to fill that gap? The basic idea of string theory is that the fundamental constituents of matter are very, very tiny, small pieces of string. And the different vibrations of these uh, bits of string would correspond to different elementary particles. So if the string vibrates in one way, it would be an electron. If it vibrates in another way, it would be a proton. Another way, it might be, correspond to gravity. Um, uh, so in this way, a string, a p string theory and these pieces of string would unify all of the elementary particles that we observe into a single theoretical framework. What Stephen Hawking argues in his new book is that the latest advance in string theory called M-theory could soon have the universe all sewn up. It turns out there's five different string theories, uh, but through a lot of hard work that was carried out in the 90s, largely by the UK string theory community, it was realized that these five different string theories are actually ma manifestations or facets of a deeper, richer underlying structure called M-theory. And it's now believed that this idea of M-theory is the most promising route for unification of all of theoretical physics. According to Hawking, by explaining how the universe works in intimate detail, M-theory will mean there's no room left for a creator. That's Hawking's opinion, but does the science back him up? Even proponents of M-theory know it needs validating. Machines like the new Large Hadron Collider could reveal some of M-theory's weirder predictions, but can they prove it? Certainly one of the biggest predictions that string theory has is that the world doesn't have just three dimensions, it has 11 dimensions. And some of those predictions of extra dimensions you may observe at the LHC. So in that respect, we may see evidence for extra dimensions at the LHC, which would verify some aspects of string theory. But verifying all of string theory in one go will take many, many years or lifetimes. Even if experiments eventually prove M-theory, they can't explain what came before the universe, so there's still space for a leap of faith. Tom Clark, so did he or didn't he? And does it really matter? Joining us to discuss the arguments raised by Stephen Hawking is Alistair McGrath, Professor of Theology from King's College London, and in Geneva, the physics and astronomy scholar, Professor John Butterworth. Well, you're not just a professor of theology because you actually studied quantum physics before, or well, quantum theory anyway, uh, before that, and biology and the rest of it. So do you understand all that? Well, I did. I think the real issue, though, is where it takes us. I think that the theory itself is controversial and still developing. What I really want to reflect on is where it takes us. Is this actually simply the process, a part of a, a journey which takes us somewhere? Is it its end point? Because science is a journey which is really unfolding as time goes on. We're at this point now. Where will we be in 100 years' time? Because remember, 100 years back, we all thought the universe had been here forever. The idea that's come into being is actually a rather an exciting new theory, and certainly that's one of the reasons why there's such an interesting debate. Uh, professor Butterworth, um, you, you as well as being a, a professor of all this stuff, um, are an atheist. So um, are you with Prof uh, Stephen Hawking? Um, I, I think that he, he's right in that we were, I think the, the idea of a journey is, is true. I mean, science is a journey 
where we where we build we're building up a more consistent intellectual picture of what goes on in the universe of building up our understanding i'm not really with him in the sense that i, I get very wary talking about god and science i think science is is a very pragmatic way of trying to understand the universe around us every time we understand something new it turns out it wasn't magic there was no need for a god there and god can be put back somewhere else but there are still questions that science can't address and while it's true as uh, some of the previous speakers said the LHC may tell us something about whether string theory or M theory have any validity. They're a long way from being experimentally validated. That's well, you sure. share, and even if they were, I don't think it would shake anyone's faith. Right. Well, you you share uh, Professor McGrath's view that we're on this journey. How how far along this journey are we? I mean, how many more years do you people need to find out? Oh, I I think we're on the edge of an ocean and we're dabbling on the shore. I think that the the point of the journey is the the point of the the enterprise is the journey. I, I don't really think that we're that close to a fully consistent scientific picture that's validated by experiment. We, we, I wouldn't want I, we don't know how, every time we think physics or science is finished, it turns out it's not and there was a lot more that we didn't understand. And as I say, M theory is a candidate. It may, not, it may be wrong. It may, it's not even fully consistent as a theory yet. Right. Well, well Professor McGrath, um, your journey, do you share the view that conceivably that, that uh, Professor Butterworth advanced there that we may be pushing God along. I mean, if you, you don't really even need to mention him because there's still room for him. Well, I, I agree with much of what Professor Butterworth has said. I mean, it seems to me that what Stephen Hawking has said, I mean, if it is him because this is a co-written book, we're not quite sure which author wrote which piece. But certainly... Gosh, look, it's bad enough trying to sort out string theory, <laughs> let alone who wrote this book. <laughs> well, coming back to the simpler question then about God. Yeah, um, much the, the, <laughs> I think the real issue might be this. I mean, I, I think that, you know, there may be something what Hawking is saying. It may well be that you can give a, a good account for a, a naturalist understanding of where the universe came from, but he's placed such emphasis on the importance of um, the laws of nature and so on that he really is simply inviting the obvious question, where did these come from? Why are they so reassuringly fine-tuned to values that led to the existence of life? And really, I think what he has done is, first of all, got the discussion moving again, which is very exciting, but all he has done really is simply moved things one step into the distance. He said, not this, but there's something else that raises when that requires explanation. Where do these laws come from, given they're of such importance? Do you think in any way, in, in producing this book, he's sort of reignited the God does, does God exist? Uh, a debate. publisher said to me the other day that if you want to sell a book, make sure A, it's about God and B, it rubbishes God. And I'm not sure he's rubbishing God at all, but we have to be aware that there is a sort of cultural climate within which this debate is taking. I think it's a very good debate. And again, I'm just so pleased that this whole debate about God has been reignited because it's a fascinating one. Uh, I think God's obituary notice has been published so often we're getting a little bit suspicious about, but this is a good discussion. Let's keep it going. Well, well, uh, Professor Butterworth, you've not, in fact, uh, you said you're not interested really in talking about God because you don't really need to, uh, because there's enough science to be wrestling with, let alone uh, God. Um, but there is this enormous question of, you know, what came before all this? Yeah, I mean, the, the point that we have, even if we don't have a consistent uh, theoretical, physical picture of the way the universe works and how it began, you still do want to know where did those rules come from, whether you find it helpful to label that whatever the, the primary cause was a god or whether you label it some form of um, pre, pre M theory quantum um, vacuum or something doesn't really have much impact on our understanding of the universe to me. And it doesn't really have much impact on my life as far as I can see. Everywhere we look around us, the universe operates according to laws that are susceptible to the human understanding that, we, that we, we can explore this wonderful universe around us and learn more by doing it. In the end, if, you, if, you, if our understanding retreats to, okay, we understand that everything after the Big Bang, we don't know how the Big Bang originated, then to me that's, that's a huge achievement already. And whether you have to then appeal to some supernatural pre-existing being, to me that begs more questions than it answers as well, to be honest. Well, well Professor McGrath, let, let's just for a moment suggest that God didn't necessarily make the universe, is there still a place for him?
I very much think so, but I think he did. But mm -hmm. uh, just keeping this discussion going, I think Professor Butterworth has raised some very good points. I mean, I don't believe in God because of this string series stuff. I believe in God for other reasons. But then I look at the picture of the world that natural science is disclosing, and I see a kind, if you like, resonance or um, chiming in of what the scientists are saying and what I believe. So it's not that I believe in God because of this. I believe in God for other reasons. It's a very exciting idea. And it seems to make at least some sense of this big picture of the cosmos that's emerging. I think this one's going to go on and on. Well, Professor McGrath, Professor Butterworth in uh, 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 Geneva, thank you very much indeed for talking with us.